The problem with OneDrive backup. Hi everyone, Leo Notenboom here for askleo.com. Today, I want to walk you through the OneDrive backup feature. And I want to explain what it's been doing to the files on your system and the files in the cloud. The issue is that it is extremely, in my opinion, invasive and almost destructive when you turn it on, even worse when you turn it off. So I want to walk through exactly what's going on in three phases. One is just OneDrive by itself before OneDrive backup gets turned on what your system looks like, where your files are placed, and so forth. Then we're going to turn OneDrive backup on, and you can see exactly how it changes things on your system. Then we'll turn OneDrive backup off, and you'll see why it is such a confusing mess. Here we are in a freshly installed Windows 11 Pro. I've not made any changes to this system whatsoever. Edge is the default browser, um, all of the privacy settings are set to Microsoft recommendations, you get the idea. So what I want to do is walk through exactly where things like your documents end up. Let's start with Windows File Explorer. Now you can see here that in each case, desktop, downloads, documents, and so forth all say stored locally. That's going to be important as we move forward. I'm going to move this window into the upper left corner because I want to be able to look at a couple of things simultaneously. Now, if we take a look at your documents shortcut here on the left-hand side, go ahead and hit properties on that. And if we take a look at location, you'll see that it is actually a folder in the users slash ask Lee, which ask Lee is going to be the username is going to be replaced by the username on your system slash documents. So if I were to actually go to that folder in another window, if I now go to C, local disk, users, Askly, and here if we take a look at documents, I'm gonna put this in the lower corner, there is the folder. So if I look at this folder, documents, it says just documents, and this actual physical folder on the disk, they're the same thing. How do I know that? Well, I'm going to create a file in that folder. I'll just create a text document. So you can see the file has shown up in both places. That's because we're using two different ways to look at the same place on your computer. This shortcut called Documents is really just a shortcut to this specific folder on your machine. Great. Now, let's have a look at OneDrive because even after you've just installed Windows, OneDrive is installed and running by default, especially if you have signed in with a Microsoft account, which, while it's possible not to do, is so highly encouraged that everybody's doing it. So there are two places that OneDrive shows up. One, of course, up here is this Leo-Personal. You can see that it's got the OneDrive icon, and if I open that up, you can see that it too has a documents folder. If I click on that, you can see though that that folder is empty. That is a different documents folder than the one we were just looking at. In fact, if we take a look at its location, go to properties, and you can see right there that its location is in a different place. See users, username, OneDrive. So if I now go to that folder, see, users, username, OneDrive, that's where this document folder is. If I double click on it to go into it, now I'm looking at it again in two different ways. One is the full path to the documents folder using the C colon slash users slash etc. And the other is using this shortcut in Windows File Explorer, but they are the same location. And once again, we can prove that by creating a file in each. I will create a new text document. 
a document originally in OneDrive documents. Now you can see I just created that. The other thing about OneDrive, of course, is that it's more than just files on your system. The only thing we've been playing with right now are files on this computer. By creating files on this computer, all we've really done is placed some files in specific folders on, again, on this computer. The cloud hasn't really been part of our thought process so far, even though we've created a file in a folder that happens to be within the OneDrive folder. Let's go look at OneDrive. I've opened up OneDrive and I've placed that in yet another window on this system. Now you can see that even though we were just playing on the computer, we just created a file on the hard disk of this computer, because it was in the OneDrive folder, it was automatically uploaded to the OneDrive cloud storage at onedrive.com. So if we take a look here, we can see my files, we have documents, which is a mirror of the documents folder that has been placed on our PC. Why do I call it a mirror? Well, that's kind of like what OneDrive is really all about. That's its fundamental job in the world is to mirror what you place in your OneDrive folder on your PC to the cloud. Another example might be to create a second document here. There's a second text document in OneDrive. I will hit enter. Now you can see this icon changed very briefly from a pair of arrows chasing each other to a checkbox. That means that OneDrive has uploaded that file to the cloud. If I go over here to the OneDrive website and hit refresh, boom. The file is there now too. So I've got my document originally in OneDrive, my second document in OneDrive, and if I now delete that file in the cloud, you'll notice that within a second or two, it will disappear from Windows File Explorer. Remember, OneDrive is a mirror. Whatever you do on your hard disk, in the OneDrive folder gets uploaded to OneDrive and whatever you do in OneDrive gets reflected in your OneDrive folder on your PC. Now I keep referring to the OneDrive folder because that's very important here. If we go back to the old documents folder, the one we started with before we started talking about OneDrive, nothing's changed. It's all still there. That's about to change. So far, all we've really done is worked with OneDrive in its normal fashion. We have not enabled the backup function. That's what we're going to do next. Over here, I'm going to right click on the OneDrive icon in the notification area and select settings. I'm going to click on the backup tab and we're going to manage backup. In our case, OneDrive is allowing me to choose to turn on backup. I have seen it be so insistent that in fact, you have to either explicitly turn it off or it's just on by default, depending on the scenario you're looking at. So you may already have backup turned on. Some of the things that we saw before we turn on backup here may have looked a little different to you. And we're about to explain why. I'm going to go ahead and say start backup. Now you'll notice a few things changed in Windows File Explorer after we did that. Let's take a look at exactly what changed. I'm going to go ahead and close the OneDrive settings dialog because honestly, we're done with it right now. You'll notice that the local disk Users Ask Lee Documents, the original documents folder that we had put some things in before we talked about OneDrive at all is now empty. That's because our documents, whatever they might have been, have been moved into the documents folder in OneDrive. And the documents shortcut 
in Windows File Explorer has now been updated to refer not to the original Documents folder, but instead it's now a shortcut to the Documents folder in the OneDrive folder. I need to say that one again. Before you turn on OneDrive Backup, the shortcut in Windows File Explorer points to Users, your username, slash Documents. After you turn on OneDrive Backup, that shortcut is updated to point to Users, username, OneDrive, slash Documents. Your documents have been moved into the OneDrive Documents folder. And you can see here, if we take a look, we're looking at the contents of the OneDrive Documents folder. It now contains both the file originally in the Computers Documents folder and the file that was originally in the OneDrive Documents folder. The two Documents folders have been merged and placed in OneDrive. The original Documents folder still exists and it is empty because your files have been moved. And we can confirm that all of this got mirrored online by hitting refresh over on OneDrive on the web. And sure enough, there are our two documents. That's what OneDrive is referring to as backup. By moving your documents into the OneDrive folder tree, then your documents will be automatically uploaded to OneDrive in the cloud. In other words, they'll be backed up. Now I've been focusing purely on the documents folder, but the other documents that were the other folders that were listed, uh, pictures and I think desktop, also apply. But this is so confusing when it comes to documents that it really warrants focusing on that folder. So great, this might be exactly what you want. Your documents shortcut now refers to the documents folder in OneDrive. You can do all your work in that documents folder and it will automatically be backed up to OneDrive. If that's what you want, great, you're done. The only possible remaining confusion is that this other documents folder that's not in OneDrive still exists. And that can be confusing. But if you understand that there are two documents folders and by turning on backup, you have moved which one is the quote unquote real one, then you can just get on with your life. The other problem, and this one is very subtle, but it's also extremely annoying. If you have five gigabytes of data in your documents folder, for whatever reason. You've got five gigabytes of data. Maybe you've been doing work there for a long time. Maybe you have lots of PDFs and other documents. It's just accumulated to the point where it has exceeded five gigabytes. When you turn on OneDrive Backup, two things will happen. One, all of those documents, all of the contents of your documents folder will be moved into the OneDrive Documents folder. And then they'll be uploaded to OneDrive in the cloud. Now, depending on your internet speed, of course, that could take a little while, right? Five gigabytes is five gigabytes. But here's the catch. A Microsoft account is free, but the free account comes with only five gigabytes of OneDrive storage online. So what that means is the moment you turned on backup, if you've got five gigabytes of data in your documents folder, you've instantly exceeded your OneDrive capacity. Now, Microsoft will of course offer to sell you more space. There are a couple of ways you could just buy more OneDrive space on an annual or monthly basis. Um, my recommendation, if you want to go that route, is to go ahead and get Microsoft 365. It comes with a terabyte of space, and that was another way of solving the problem. But what if you don't want to do that? Well, you might think turning off backup 
would be the thing to do. It is, kind of. Let's do it. So we're currently in a situation where our PC's native documents folder is empty because we are now working in the documents folder in OneDrive. So you can see here we've got um, users, username documents, the native documents folder on your PC. And then up here, I've got users, username, OneDrive documents, which is the documents folder that we have started using because we turned on backup. Let's turn backup off. Once again, over to the OneDrive icon in the lower right notification area, right click on it, settings, backup, manage backup. Now we're going to turn it off. Stop backup. Stop backup on documents and stop backup on pictures. Great. One would think that we would be done. Now I can go ahead and close this and we have turned off backups using OneDrive. But our files didn't move. In fact, the documents shortcut over here was updated to your computer's native documents folder. But now there's this other shortcut to the other documents folder. In other words, the thing that was taking up all that space in OneDrive has not been fixed. All of the documents that had been backed up and had been moved into the OneDrive documents folder, which is still here, have not been placed back in your computer's native documents folder. In order to do that, you have to do it yourself, which to be fair, is fairly easy. For example, if I want this file originally in my computer documents to go back to the computer documents folder, I could just drag and drop it. Boom, it's there. Deleted files are removed everywhere. That's because we deleted a file in OneDrive. And yes, we know that's exactly what it means when you remove something from your OneDrive folder. It's being deleted from OneDrive and from the cloud. Go ahead and hit got it on this one, because if I refresh the cloud, you'll see that that document is now gone. It is again, a mirror of what's on the OneDrive folder on the PC. We've moved a document out of that documents folder, the OneDrive documents folder and placed it into the native documents folder. Are you confused yet? I know I am. The short version of all of this is simply this. Without OneDrive backup turned on, you have one documents folder, I call it your native documents folder, on your PC. It is at C, users, your username, documents. It's on your PC and it's only on your PC. OneDrive will have its own documents folder that you can use if you want to, but it is unrelated to your native documents folder. The OneDrive documents folder is within the OneDrive folder on your PC. See, users, username, OneDrive documents. It's a completely different location. It's a completely different folder from the original native documents folder. You can use the two however you want. If you want documents to be uploaded to OneDrive automatically, do your work in the OneDrive documents folder. If you want to keep your documents only local, then do the work in the native documents folder. It's your choice. It's actually very easy to manage. If you turn on OneDrive backup, then OneDrive will try to make it look like you have only one documents folder by merging the contents of these two folders into the OneDrive documents folder, which is then uploaded to the OneDrive cloud. 
If you turn backups off, that merging is not undone. Your files remain in the OneDrive Documents folder. They are not placed back in the Native Documents folder. If you want to move things back to your Native Documents folder, you can do that yourself with a simple drag and drop. A lot of people are very confused by how OneDrive has implemented this feature. There are other ways to do it. Honestly, Dropbox does a much better job of solving this exact same problem. But OneDrive is what we have. It's what's on the machine. And like I said, Microsoft pushes so hard to make this the tool you use and to have backups turned on that it is very common to find yourself in this confusing situation without ever realizing how you got here. Hopefully now you have an understanding. My recommendation is that once you understand where you're at, that you turn backups off, turn off OneDrive backups, manage your documents yourself. Like I said, if you want something in the cloud, put it in the OneDrive folder. If you want something local only, put it in the local documents folder. Manage it yourself. Yes, that does mean you need to take responsibility for backing up your native documents folder yourself. But if you're backing up your PC, as I recommend using some other techniques, say image backups nightly, then you're getting backed up already. The cloud backup is just another layer. That's my recommendation. The OneDrive backup feature is too confusing and too invasive and should be avoided. I hope that helps clarify things a little bit. There is a written article on this topic that will try to clarify some of this in writing. Some of it may be easier to follow uh, written on the page. So to do that, visit askleo.com slash 156972. I'm Leo Notenboom, and this is askleo.com. Thanks for watching.